Here we have the Intel 13900 KS processor that came in for repair. I got the CPU right over here and the processor has some missing components on the front here. Now, we do not know the values of those components. I looked everywhere online and I was not able to tell what the values of the missing components are. But here's what I found out. First, let's take a look and see what's going on with the processor. We see two missing components here, one on the left and one on the right. So we have four components here. And we'll look at the rest of the CPU. Let me just clean up this area quick. The customer probably wanted to delid the processor, and this happened in the process. The KS are special edition processors, 6 gigahertz. And as far as I know, they are limited in production. And I think they differ by 0 0.2 gigahertz compared to the non-KS. All right, so if you look here, we have four components on this side of the processor. And if we rotate, we have four components here as well. So four here and four on top. Now, we do not know the values of those components. I looked online and I was not able to find a single person who had a similar problem where he laid out the values of those components. But I did find someone with the 12800 processor that appears to have the same layout components. And this component here turned out to be a capacitor, 100 nanofarad capacitor, and this one 100 ohm resistor. That's what I was able to find based on the 12800 processor that has the same component layout. What I want to do is I have an LCR meter here, right here. We're going to measure all the components on the processor and see what we read. And I have the LCR meter in auto mode. So if it's a capacitor, it's going to detect a capacitor. If the component is a resistor, it's going to detect a resistor. And if the component is an inductor, it's going to detect an inductor. If we probe, if we measure this component here, we are reading 130 ohms, and it's a resistor. 130 ohms, and it's a resistor. It's not an inductor, not a filter, not a capacitor. It's a resistor. If we measure the one next to it, we are reading a resistor also, and 1.2 kilo ohms. 1.2K. So we have 130 ohms here, and we have 1.2 kilo ohms here, and both of them are resistors. We know that for a fact. Now, I'm measuring in circuit, and measuring in circuit may not be 100% accurate, but just an estimate. Let's measure the rest of the components. We have 115 ohms, and it's a resistor. 114 ohms, resistor. We have 49 ohms, resistor. And we have 1.2 kilo ohms. So we have 115, 115, 50 ohms, right? 50 ohms on this one. 49 ohms, and we have 1.2K. And on the other side, where we have the missing components, we have 1.2K, and we have 130 ohms here. And the information I found online, based on the 12800 processor, the value of the resistor is 100 ohms. Now, if I want to be on the safe side, I will go for a 120 ohm resistor rather than going for a 100 ohm resistor because all the resistors that we have on the board are measuring at least 115 ohms with exception to one of them 
which is measuring 130 ohms. Of course, we have 1.2K on two resistors, and we have 50 ohms on two resistors. So the fact that somebody measured this component here as 100 ohms on the 12800 processor, we're going to go for 120 ohms. Or maybe what we can do is, what if we actually desoldered one of those components measuring 114 ohms and we measure it off circuit and we'll go with that value. Maybe if we desolder the 114 ohm resistor, we may read 100 ohms and that's where the 100 ohms came from. Maybe. Let's do that. Let's use our hot tweezers to desolder the component and that's the component that is measuring 115 ohms, 114 ohms. We just got the microscopes in. I mentioned in yesterday's video that we are expecting the microscopes later this week. A lot of back orders. And I told you that we're going to have a unique design. Wow. Look at the finish on the scope. Absolutely amazing. Look at this. Wow. And that's all metal. Beautiful. The highest quality microscope in the market. You can tell by the quality of our videos, just compare our videos to other content creators and you will see for yourself. So right now, a couple of ways to know that you have the official Northridge Fix microscope, the unique color, the branding, and also when you plug power onto the scope, you will see our logo on the screen. Let me show you. Let me plug the HDMI cable and plug power. And you should see our logo on the screen before the scope opens up. Right there. Awesome. Awesome. Amazing. I do not have a lens, so we're not going to be able to see anything. I will go over the scope in a future video, maybe later this week. And I will also go over why I like to use this specific scope compared to a stereo microscope. A lot of people still ask. I've done a video a long time ago when we started carrying the microscopes. We had the blue one, and then we upgraded to the black one, and now the red one. So we will start to ship out the microscopes tomorrow. It will take us maybe two, three days to ship out all the orders, and the microscopes will be put back in stock by later tonight, so you can log in and order. And as far as the capacitor goes, which is right here, based on the 12800 processor. It's measuring about 0 0.1 microfarads, which equals to 100 nanofarads. Sounds reasonable. And the value of the capacitor is not going to really make or break the circuit. So even if we are off on the capacitor, that's fine. But we do not want to be too off on the resistor. Let's remove it. Now, those SMD components are very thin. Even my hot tweezers struggled to grab onto that component. We have a lot of glare on the board. We can barely see what's going on. We can barely see the pads or the color of the board or the color of the component. So in this case, what we do is use the Northridge Fix anti-glare light. It's like day and night. When you are using the ring light, you have something like this. Look at the color of the board, look at the color of the blue components, and look at the pads. Switch to anti-glare light. Wow. Awesome. You can purchase the Northridge Fix anti-glare light off our site. Just log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, and you can buy all your tools from there. We carry everything from soldering station, hot air station, power supply, voltage injection tool, charging stations, Original Amtec Flux. We are a distributor of original Inventac Amtec Flux. Braidwick, tweezers, blades. All items are in stock. Order, check out, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. Most of the items that we use on our bench here, we carry and sell in our shop. And even the SMD components, the resistors, we have the books. We have 10 different books from size 201, to 1206, 201, 402, 603, 805, and 1206, 
size SMD components for both capacitors and resistors. And that's where we're going to get the components from. Let's measure this component, and it looks like a 402 size SMD component. And off circuit, we are reading 150 ohms. So you know what? We're going to go for a 150 ohm resistor just to be on the safe side because we have 150 ohms here. We have 150 ohms here. We have 130 ohms over there. If it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then most likely it's a duck. We're going to go for 150 ohm resistor and not for 100 ohms. And we are taking an educated guess here. Let's clean up, apply a fresh layer of flux and try not to lose that component, but even if we lose it, that's okay. We have replacements using the books. So we did confirm that all those components are resistors using our LCR meter. Apply a fresh layer of flux, and we're gonna use our NF.mini pen. And NF stands for Northridge Fix, if you are new to the channel. Such an amazing soldering pen, and we are using one of the best tips in the market. We went through a lot of tips, we tested a lot of tips, and we settled for the ones that we are including with the NF.mini pen. One of the best tips you can get your hands on. I've been using this tip for the past maybe six months, and it still holds solder like new. I mean, even JBC tips, and JBC is known to have good quality tips. And by the way, you can use JBC tips on the NF.mini pen. But even JBC tips, hearing from a lot of people, they do not last more than a month or two. I've been using this one for the past seven months. So I would say, based on my personal experience, seven months working with the same tip every day and the tip still holds solder, that's amazing. That's a good quality tip. Look at this. Look how the tip grabs solder like it's new. That's a good quality tip. You can choose between a knife tip, bend tip, and conical tip, or the NF.mini pen with all three tips. Just choose the option from our site. Now, it doesn't matter how we solder this component, front or back. The value is the same. So let's make the CPU unique. Three blues and one black. What do you think? We're going to clean up later. Let's just touch up on the resistor using the NF.mini pen. The resistor is soldered on perfectly. But just for the fun of it, we can touch up on the component. Why not? So now we have one unique board. If the customer cares about aesthetics, we just created one cool design for the customer, if he can even see the components. One blue, one black, two blues. We've got the blues. Let's do the same right here. We're going to grab a 150 ohm resistor, solder it here, and a 100 nanofarad capacitor and solder it here. And like I said with capacitors, it's not very critical if the value is off. But based on my research, looking at the 12800 processor, that's a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor, which is equal to 100 nanofarad value. Again, that's a 402 size capacitor. So I have my resistor book here, and I have my capacitor book here. I just want to make sure this is the 402, yes. And we're going to flip over to 100 nanofarads capacitor. Okay, and I got it right here. Each one of the SMD books contains about 8,500 components. You're never going to run out of SMD components if you have the books. You can buy the books individually, or you can buy all 10 books. Just log in to northbridgefix.com and 
search for the books or maybe I'll include a link down below. But if you cannot go online on northwitchfix.com and find the book, then you should not be soldering or doing this if you're not smart enough to find the book on the site. A few days ago, I posted a video where I said we need help. And a few people wrote in the comments, what's your address? Are you kidding me? You cannot find the address, but you want to do micro soldering work. And this time and age, if I ask my seven-year-old daughter to go online and locate the address of a specific business, she's going to be able to do it. She doesn't have to type. She can just talk to Google or Alexa or Siri. Or just go online, search Northridge Fix, contact or address. Wow. What's your address? Great question. I do not know how far that person will get in life. I wish everybody the best, but you need to help yourself. Nobody's going to help you. Do not just sit down and expect somebody to tell you what the address is. Do some work. That's if you want to succeed in life. I do not know where you're going to be two years from now, five years from now. But if you do not look for the answer yourself, I got bad news for you. Nothing comes easy in life. You have to do it yourself. Do not expect anybody to do it. And if you have a rich uncle, do not just say, I have a rich uncle. I'll go and ask him for money. Why don't you put the work yourself and make the money and you become the source for giving? The hand that gives is a lot better than the hand that takes. You may say, I do work. I have three jobs. But I'm barely making ends meet. Keep doing what you're doing. If you find better opportunities, take it. And good things will come your way. End of the day, whatever is written for us from God is what we're going to get. We cannot all be rich. We cannot all be poor. We cannot all be technicians. We cannot all be doctors. Because blessings is not only you being rich. You have a 100% equation. You may have 30% health, 30% money, 10% good kid, 10% good wife. You're able to sleep at night. All of those are blessings. Nobody has everything. It's an equation. You have portions. Someone may be poor, but he has good health. Someone else may be rich, but he has bad health. Someone may be rich and has good health, but he cannot sleep at night. So it's an equation. If you do not have it from one end, you're going to have it from the other end. But we always strive to succeed in this life. But you always have to remember, we're not in this life forever. How long are we going to live? 60 years, 70 years, 80 years? Some people are dying at 20 years. Some people are dying at 5 years. Let's replace the resistor. Let's grab a 150 ohm resistor. And we have one right at the very edge of the strip. Is it going to fly into ninth dimension? Maybe. But we have a lot. Should we make this area of the board unique where we have the resistor flipped? So we have one white, two blues, one yellow. What do you think? We're not just fixing electronics here. We are creating a piece of art. And just look at that tip. Look at how shiny that tip is. The NF dot mini pen alone is nothing. It's the tip that counts. Beautiful. 
the component is soldered on perfectly, but just for the fun of it, why not do this? All right, we are done. Now, one issue is I do not have a motherboard next to me that supports this CPU, but we're going to call the CPU a fix. We replaced the components. We did our investigation, and we're done. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.